Services, the Lieutenant Governor of Kentucky, Ms. Coleman. Hello. Hello. Um, this class is the computer science. There is um, the path that you have for computer pro programming, okay. network admin, um, web design, and information supporting information support and services. Okay. And uh, the computer program pathway um, has a few classes, such as AP Computer Science Principles, Cybersecurity, or Web Design, Computational Thinking, which is Advanced Programming, and uh, certs of that are Java, JavaScript, Python, and APCSP, which can have college credit. Okay. Okay. So, like, what we talked about, what, like, how the pathways might contribute to the, to the new battery plant. Just do, like, like for example, computer programming. Oh, computer programming uh, programs machines and robots. And you can manufacture robots, too. Okay. Do you want to do all of them? If you want. Um, network admin and network security runs internal networks and maintains uh, security connectivity. Uh, web design designs intranet sites and multimedia publishing. And the information support and services addresses uh, daily hardware plus software issues and install updates. Okay. So is this your your seating? Uh, yeah. Um, I love it. All of these kids though are. Okay. Taking care of them while you. So they're coming in. He is our immediate <laughs> yeah. arts, okay. which is right next door. So yeah. They do a lot of uh, recording and things like that yeah. they're doing here, and then yeah. tie it to the computer science. Yeah. I love the. That's comfortable. All right. Well, thank you all so much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Appreciate yeah. it. Good to see you. All. So which one are you in now? I'm in class. I still want the guys just the water, the water feed. Okay. How far are we going to be in the I'll be graduating. this year. This year I'll be graduating. I'll be that I need. I have a good paying job with all tech. There you go. Take opportunity here. Mr. Back is a great teacher. He's fun. He's fun. He's fun. He's fun. He's which one to say is he in here? One of the glasses on this. Okay, I see. I see. Well, that's great. Okay. Hello. Good. How are you? Thank you for for letting us kind of crash the party in here. Yeah. This is amazing. Yeah, we do a lot of it. Are you doing a big number? Right. We do a lot of outside. Uh, I'm actually a senior. I'm going to graduate with a uh, triple major, all three engineering pathways. Yeah. Uh, we have mechanical engineering, civil engineering, and then uh, electrical engineering. You can go in any direction you need to take this So, what do you know what you're Probably mechanical engineering or okay. some kind of design engineering. Okay. So what's the next step? Um, going to college. Uh, I'm going to be either going, I'm going to some college. <laughs> some college, okay. Sure. That'll work out for you, no matter what. Okay, that's great. And do you want to pursue, do you say you want to pursue? Uh, I've just always liked designing and uh, making stuff. Okay. I've also been in Dutch Robotics competition for the past uh, eight years. Those are awesome. That is, what you all do is so cool. I mean, it really is. It really is. That's a really cool competition. So are they working on one in particular? Uh, yeah. Great. I think they're building robots. Yeah. I don't know what you're Like, I just got this guy's with robots. I see. So what our design is, is we're supposed to put those desks in here and like these motors are going to turn the wheels and it's going to like shoot out to go into those baskets over there. Okay. And then, so how, where are you in the process? Like how, how much? So right now I'm just trying to get it to where the gears make it go up and down so I can like kind of get the degree I need. 
Do you mind to share how many days you've been in this class? Um, well, I've been here since trimester one, so okay. probably over 100. I don't know. Okay. Some of these students are just starting trimester two. Okay. And so, how many of you, this is your first trimester here? Yeah. It's a new starting point. Yeah. <laughs> well, good luck to you. Thank you. Yeah, what you guys do is amazing. <laughs> Okay, so they're trying to shoot these, these frisbees? Okay, hi! Jason Nagel. Good to see you, Jason. Yeah. yeah. So this year's game, they try to pick up those uh, discs and put them into the high goals. And okay. It's a timed match where two robots compete against two robots. For, oh and there's an autonomous section at the beginning where they do a autonomously programmed robots and get a bonus. So I know there's a VEX robotics competition, mm -hmm. and so is that the is that the goal of the competition this year? And you're working up to it. It is. Okay. This is the game. This is kind of okay. like a problem. We kind of attack it like an engineering problem. Yeah. Apply the design process to us, define the problem, and then generate <laughs> concepts and build them, and test, you know, prototypes. So we're kind of in the middle of the testing prototype stages. Yeah. Okay. So when is the the competition in spring? It is. Okay. Yeah. I think generally about uh, third week of April is the world competition. It's in Dallas now. Previously, uh, three years ago, for four years running, it was in Louisville. Okay. So we, we did really good when it was in Louisville. Yeah. Right the road. Yeah. <laughs> we had really. a lot of teams That'd be a good trip, that. though, for, yeah. for these students. Yeah. Well, very neat. Yeah. It's amazing. I was actually asking. Where are they going? It's kind of to accomplish the game, and then yeah. there's a lot of strategy built into it because two robots have to work together. And then, so they have to coordinate with each other, and then they uh, compete against other robots as well. And then there's a time competition where they attempt to score as many as they can on the whole. So, in addition to all of the math and science and physics and engineering, there's also collaboration. There is a whole lot. I love and it. They, they can complete an engineering notebook, and they compete for like design and excellence awards where they, how well they apply the design process, yeah. and the teamwork. And yeah. There's a lot of soft skills built into. The, yeah. You know, the, yeah. Uh, the biggest trouble for me usually ends up being more team concept and resolution. Yeah. And then, you know, time management, and right. getting the deadlines, right. applying a Gantt chart, applying a calendar. All those, all those real world project management. Yeah. And so you got different roles of team members. So, it, it, you know, it's a very inter intertwined competition. It's a, you know, it's a year long project, too. It's not just like right. So, right. So they spend a lot of time working on it, applying the design right. process. That's amazing. Well, good luck to you all. Thank yeah. You. Hope you make it to Dallas. Yep. Yeah. We're looking forward yeah. to it. Yeah. Yeah. So good to meet you. Thank you so much. <laughs> you still have a lot to see. I know, right? <laughs> Only half of them. Yeah. Let's go down. Let's take a look at the automotive shop real quick. I have obviously Ford. Uh, I'm going to show you our automotive plant. Okay. I know we're not building cars down there or anything like that, but. A lot of kids in the industry are going okay. into work. So, Swope has been a big part of the Harden County. So okay. We'll show you um, what we do down here. Yeah, right? sounds good. All right. Thank, thank, you, thank you. you. Hi, I'm Jacqueline. I'm Michael. Nice to meet you, Michael. Yeah. Good to see you, Tom. Yeah. Okay, so tell me what y'all are doing. We're doing a multi point inspection. Okay. We're checking the fluids, filters, and stuff like that. Okay. So, why did you choose this automotive as a pathway? Because I grew up working on cars, and okay. I just love working on cars. Okay. So how far along are you in this process? Uh, this is my second year in here. Okay. Second or third. Alright. So what do you want to do when you get in? Uh, work at a shop and eventually own my own. Okay. Yeah. So you need some, some business yes. experience too. Okay. So the three-point inspection, and this whole team is working together on this. Is that what they're, they're doing the same thing? Yeah, they're doing the same thing over there. Okay. Pretty cool. So what do you like most about automotive? Just being able to do something I love. Yeah. Do, is that in your family? Yes. You have like, okay, so you've kind of grown up. Yeah. Okay, fantastic. And you're from here? Yes. Born and raised here? Yes. Okay. So do you ever get forward in, in the SK Oval? Any any thought once it gets built? Uh, it's going to be a I've pretty big deal. I'm thinking about it. Yeah. yeah. Pretty cool. Okay, well thank you so much for telling me about thank it. You. I appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. So back that way would be our culinary. Okay. So they're, they're connected straight to the kitchen and the cafeteria. Uh, 
we have five different pathways for health science. Um, and then we have pharmacy. We have EKG, um, we have nursing, we have medical office, and then full body. Is that what we're okay. And so each individual, you can have a ready certification. And so I am in my third year of nursing, and so I just recently took my state test. And so I am a state registered nurse assistant. Um, so yes, so it has been my, my adopted daughter is going to. Um, we, we're going to have a pinning uh, in a couple weeks. She's going to finish our school, so that's a great profession. Typically, we think about oil medication, liquid when we're younger, right? Hey, Ms. Hall, do you have a student that could kind of explain what's going on today in your class? Actually, new material today, so we just new material today. Chris, are you telling me? Taking this class? <laughs> okay, now so we're well, we're actually this is actually medical math yeah. class. Yeah. yeah. So with Ms. Hall, I took the nursing class, the um, assistant nursing, and so we did hours of clinicals, um, class time, lecture, and this class was very informational. Um, we got to work hands on at the bedside with the mannequins and really got to take charge in learning what we're doing and clinicals was an experience you know I didn't really know kind of what to expect but Ms. Hall did an absolute outstanding job in getting us prepared and everything and so I was really nervous about the state test but we just took our certification test um, about three weeks ago and so I got my results back in last week and so like I said I'm now a state registered nurse assistant amazing um, so yeah only a junior I'm only 16 years old so it's an amazing opportunity that we have here and then I'm also in the early college program so yeah it's kind of this whole my, my daughter is going to graduate from nursing school in two weeks oh awesome yes i'm going to we're excited about her pinning and yeah yes, she's very excited yes. yeah she's awesome, awesome awesome yeah yeah i bet she's finally feeling like some relief too she's two weeks out she she <coughs> is it's like the lull where she's done with school but she knows the NCLEX is coming right so it's kind of she but she's studying for that so um, but it's I couldn't have, I couldn't be more happy that she picked such a great profession so, yes. Yes. yeah good deal yeah good deal. Awesome. we could I was telling her that we could hire 6,000 nurses tomorrow in the state of Kentucky and break even yes so we're going to need all these yeah. all these folks <laughs> yes. yes. Ready. If you'll just blow through that lab right there and just kind of so we can see it, and okay. then we'll, we'll all go back out. Thank you. Into the Thank you. If you want. Okay. Let me show you know, yeah. what they're doing in there. With the pharmacy, they are actually taking a test right now. So on Mondays and Fridays are their penalty in class days, and then Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, they're out at an actual pharmacy. Um, some of them are co oping, some of them are just doing regular clinical hours. And then in February, they're going to get certified for pharmacy technician. And then lobotomy is also in here, and that's our morning group. They do kind of the same thing, um, except we do stick each other. And then yeah. usually in the afternoons, we have EKG tech okay. here as well. What a great experience to go out in the field three days a week, yeah. right? Yeah. Yes. yeah, that's great. Yeah. That's great. So. Okay, we won't disrupt your test. I'm so sorry. <laughs> First of all, thank you all so much for giving me a tour today. I really appreciate that. And I have to tell you that um, one of the things that I'm so grateful for is that you all are getting this kind of an experience during your school day, right? I mean, that's pretty, that's pretty impressive. I, I obviously didn't get that. Um, and even when I was still in the classroom, that wasn't something that was really the norm yet. Um, and so to hear your experience, and, and what I like is, um, and I know this is chaotic for all of the adults in the building, but what I like is each of you have a different experience, right? It, is, it seems like it, it's kind of um, catered to your schedule and what you need and what you're looking for in those next steps. Uh, but I'm always looking for how we can make this better. And so, um, I don't know if you know this or not, I was a teacher before I became Lieutenant Governor. I was a basketball, I actually coached in um, several games in Hardin County, um, and was an assistant principal. Uh, and so, I always want to think, think a little bit more critically about how we can push even more and get more, even more done. And so, what are, 
what are some ways that you see maybe, like for instance, maybe there are some barriers that exist that you think if we could get rid of this, then it would make this better. Does anything come to mind off the top of your head? Think of scheduling, think of bills, buses, you know, opportunities for being in the field, obviously for college. I would say um, more for like middle schoolers, kind of giving them more of an opportunity to see what high school all entails. Because I was somebody who heard about the early college program through family members rather than like teachers and like really it being brought onto us in that like level because you got to prepare yourself starting freshman year taking the correct classes that you need in order to get yourself prepared in order to be accepted into the academy and everything right. so I think the biggest thing is kind of educating the younger ones more like more so on what is actually going on here because there's so many opportunities here and there's so many different things for each and every single person to experience that it's not just about one section, you know, there's many, many opportunities. So I think one thing we can work better on is educating the younger ones mm -hmm. and really showing them what goes on and, you know, what all in is for them set up. So Yeah, that's a great point because it this is a relatively new, I mean, not new, but this is a, a recent endeavor that I think a lot of districts have taken on. And so just really trying to make sure that our students that are walking in the door have these opportunities yes. has been big. So I think you're right. I think making sure now that we are making folks aware and communicating those opportunities earlier will help students be better prepared. Yes, I like that. Yes, yeah. Um, I think we could like instill this opportunity like at home high schools. You know, like a way to like get them there because sometimes people don't want to come from their home high schools and come here and get, get disconnected. Because what I found that coming from Central and getting my associates, I like don't really talk to my friends back at Central. Like I found, I love the community I built here, but it's like I've lost that connection, you know. Right. Like, and I love that EC three is like its own little community. Yeah, I love that. But like, you know, like more connectedness, I guess. Uh huh. That so makes like sense. outreach. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that would be very hard to. Um, kind of come through with the same group of people in a way um, and then everybody kind of pick their own little niche and go their different directions. I can see how that would be a little different anyway. And to add on that, I think it's really important that like uh, we like build trust between like, the home high schools and this program because I think there's kind of a disconnect between the two and it's kind of hard for like people that don't know what's going on here to like understand the concept of what we're trying to do. You don't know what you don't know, right? Yeah. yeah. I would say that too. I would say if you're a teacher and say you're teaching English, for example, uh, and you are not aware of what actually goes on in this building, um, that would leave you a little disconnected from even how you could tie what you do in your classroom to what your students are working on here, which there's a connection to to it all. So let me ask you this. Um, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm not from Harvard County. I'm not from E-Town. Um, so I'm very interested to hear your thoughts just as students that are growing up here right now about what you think about the Ford and, and SK Oval um, project that's going on. Because I know, um, just to give you a little background, um, Glendale is bigger than the town I came I grew up in. <laughs> so Ber the city of Bergen, you guys have heard of Bergen? Okay. Um, it's not far from here, but it's tiny. There's like a thousand people in a four-way stop, and that's it, and I'm not kidding. Um, so th I know the twin battery plants are going to employ five times the number of people that were in my hometown growing up. So like that's, it's huge. Uh, and obviously I have the, the vantage point of being Lieutenant Governor, but also um, thinking about economic development and jobs and all these things. What do you what do you, what do you think in your everyday life? What's going through your head? What do you see? Um, I'll start. Um, I think coming to EC3, I didn't really know what to expect because I've come here since freshman year, but I was only here those little period of a time during one trimester. Um, so I was really nervous about coming here all day long, like Chad was saying, it's a new experience, new people, you know, having to make connections. 
Um, but the one thing I can say is it was very welcoming. And my experience here has been the best, like, I thank God every day that I made the decision to come here because it has just, I have built so many new connections. And you can really see the care that people have for you as far as teachers and, you know, even someone who may seem minor to others, um, our janitor. I love him. And he's an amazing person. And Listen, so those, they, make, they make it the whole day work. <laughs> yes. right now. Yeah. And so I think the most thing, like the best thing I can say and describe is it has been such a warm environment here. You know, I feel very welcomed and it's not a matter of that you're only here to educate yourself and that's it. Like they genuinely care about what's going on in your life and you know how they can help better you as a person, not only as a student here. And so I think the biggest thing is just, you know, everyone having a heart ready to welcome people. Yeah. And you know, that's what it's all about and just, you know, being respectful and kind to each and every single person. So I think that's how I can best describe my experience here is just very friendly. It's, it's a community, you know, and here it genuinely feels like family. You know, it doesn't feel so, you know, strict and formal. You know, you can be who you are here. Yeah. And so it's what I enjoy the most. Love it. So you're going into welding, yes, right? So what have you heard about the Blue Oval and the opportunities that are there? We actually went to a job fair over at Pritchard Community Center one day and I talked to the local 502, local 110, and everybody, all the unions and stuff. And the Blue Oval Project, it's just a huge opportunity for welders and engineers and everything. All the, a lot of the pathways here gives everybody an opportunity, everybody an opportunity to pay a job as soon as they graduate, as soon as they turn 18 in my case. Uh, How about you, engineer? <laughs> uh, I think the, the uh, Blue Oval Project is going to be really great for this community, not just economically, just for everybody. Just I mean, it'll bring a lot more people in, and then it'll allow more jobs for local, our local community. And then, obviously, it might have some have some downsides, like our downtown uh, Glendale. It it'll be a little bigger. Some people don't like that, but um, right, right. I think I think that E Town will grow and be a lot bigger, yeah. be better. Yeah. What do you think? Um, well, obviously, this place is like a lot about uh, opportunities and growth and the Blue Oval plant just shows exactly like how we can transfer like the ideas and things that we do here straight to those. And I think it's just gonna like enhance our community as a whole. Like I think E Town Elizabeth Town like is at a lull lull at some points. Like we have the basic things. We don't have a lot of like uh I don't know, like uh big businesses that we we just have like what we need here. Right. But I think it's gonna allow us to grow, uh, not just economically, just like as a community and uh, take really, really take pride in what the project is doing. Um, kind of like what Catherine was saying, like socially and uh, community-wise, I think it's gonna grow bigger and I think that's gonna bring in more opportunity, like things to do, like activities, like more people, like like you said, five times the amount of your city, like that is so many people. <laughs> so <laughs> but that gives an opportunity for more connection and how they can like start families, you know, like grow as a community. I know you all, this is probably the farthest thing from your mind, but one day I want you to remember that, that I told you this. <laughs> but you, like I cannot imagine how different your community is going to be by the time that you are, you know, five years into your career, what you know, whatever it is, and one day you might have kids and they might, you know, go to school here, and thinking about the opportunities that they will have, it'll be a different world uh, in this county than what than what you have grown up around, which is just really, it's just amazing to think about. It really is like a, just the opportunities. You'll say I remember we working on. Um, you know, inspections and, and the automotive department and the engines are going to completely change, right? <laughs> so, it, you know, it just those things are the things that blow my mind and I always want to think about how we can stay ahead of that because I don't want us to get to a situation where we're stagnant or content uh, with where we are. I want to always make sure that like your kids have more opportunities than you do, and you had more opportunities than your parents did, right? Um, 
but I love that I love that I hear about opportunity and community and family. It's gonna like make you happy, yes. superintendent. Um, as a, as a part of your school because it's just completely the experience I hope has completely changed. Um, and is more of a um, more something that's tailored and suited to you than a one size fits all. And that's what I that's what I hear and that's what I see here today. So um, that certainly is exciting to think about. Yeah, you guys have some bright futures, I'm telling you. Yes. Going back on your point, you can't have been the same for forever. Mm -hmm. And in the next few years, hopefully something big's gonna change. Maybe something new will come to E Town now. Oh, yeah. We'll have a lot more people here. We'll have a lot of something new. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's gonna it's gonna really because this that in itself is gonna is huge, but all of the connecting, you know, businesses and and ancillary um, parts of that work are gonna continue to to build up. So uh, because we we landed this here. AESC Envision is in Bowling Green now. They they invested in a two billion dollar uh, electric vehicle plant, um, and then not too long ago we had another company that's going to work on recycling electric vehicle batteries that committed to Kentucky. So all of those things, I mean, you guys are like the heart of that, right? I mean, you're going to see it in Bowling Green and you know Louisville and you know all the areas around you are going to are going to grow up too, but. Um, I'm just so grateful for your all's insight today. It, I, I, I tell, I say this all the time, that Kentucky, the future of our economy, is in our classrooms today. And so I always want to hear from you all about what you're experiencing, what you see, what you feel, because um, economic development is a big deal. A five billion dollar investment is a big deal. Five thousand jobs is a big deal. But it's all for naught if we don't make sure that you guys are at the center of what we do, um, because. You all are going to have to hire me one day. <laughs> okay, I'm a pretty young lieutenant governor, I think. So, yeah, but thank you for, for your insight. I really do appreciate it. It means a lot. And it's very helpful to me and the governor. So when I go back to meet with him today, I'll say, I met with these students, and here's what they told me. And you never know. Something great could come from that. So thank you. Yeah, you guys have any questions for me before I go? Uh, I just have one thing to say. Uh, I also think, like, our, our years, like our juniors and seniors that – it, once we get out of college, like a four-year college, it'll be perfect timing for the new plant to open, and then everything right. else. Yeah. So I just think as soon as we get out of college, we have to, we'll have so many more opportunities just because of the new plant. You really will. That's right. You're like really in the perfect space for that. Yeah. Yeah. Ground floor. Yes. Yeah. yeah. All right. Any questions for me? We're getting ready to go. <laughs> I feel like being into no. <laughs> I love it. I really do. It's not for everybody, um, but it's uh, it's it's. I love it because I get to do this, and so I, you know, I give the governor credit when I when he asked me to run with him. I said, "This is back when I could call him Andy." I said, "Andy, if you want a wallflower, I'm not your girl." And he said, to his credit, he said, "If I wanted a wallflower, I wouldn't be talking to you." And so, in my mind, I thought I could make a difference in the school I'm in. Um, if you don't have a vision for me being a, a part of this administration, and he obviously did, but being able to get out and talk to every student and visit every school gives me such a better insight um, into what's going on because you guys, I mean, I see I see every challenge we face through the lens of students because um, you're you're living it right now. So I'm very grateful for that opportunity. It's not for everybody. Not everybody could do this. <laughs> you got to like be ready to go, but also. Your name is not top billing, so you just got to be like, in case something happens, you got to be on call. So, I'm, I'm right here. <laughs> it's like being an assistant principal, right? I Principal's not here today? See? Like an assistant principal. Principal's not here today? You're the man, right? See? He's the one with all the master keys. That's how it works. So, yeah. But thank you guys so much. It was great to talk with you. And thank you for, for joining us this morning and being here with us today. Yes, I appreciate it. Awesome.